Henry Township Trustees meeting of January 3rd, 2024. Um, are we introductions? We have the three trustees, Cynthia Powell, our minutes taker of the day. Powell. Let's see, Cynthia. Never mind. <laughs> Fire Chief, and Jennifer <laughs> Adams, and Cindy Mutcher. Margaret, our uh, fiscal officer and a special guest. Uh, Nick Bundren. Nick Bundren, okay. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order, and um, I, I guess I um, entertain a motion to appoint temporary chair, um, Margaret Silliman temporary chair uh, for the purpose of no nominating board president. Madam Chair? Yes. I think the order of events should be swearing in a, a new elected official before the meeting. Oh. Yes, uh, uh, okay. So Do we need a motion for these two? Yeah. Okay. It's just shouldn't. Oh, right. this time we're here. We'd like to congratulate Chris Future on another round. About the Would you repeat after me? Wait a minute. You got to read your hand. <laughs> I'm not the one swearing, do I? I have been on my right hand. <laughs> Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Chris Mutcher, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio. I, Chris Mutcher, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And will faithfully discharge the duties of Miami Township trustee in Greene County, State of Ohio, during my continuance in office. And will faithfully discharge the duties of Miami Township trustee in uh, Greene County, in the state of Ohio during my continuous in office. Oh, I'm sorry, in office. Thank you. Thank you. 28 years and running. A long time. Okay, now do I entertain a motion to appoint Margaret, our fiscal officer, Margaret Silliman. Temp um, temporary chairperson for the purposes of nominations. I so move. Second. We have moved seconded to appoint uh, fiscal officer Solomon as temporary chair for the purpose of nominations for the board president. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Ms. Mutra. Yes. Ms. Meyer. Yes. Motion. That being done, I would like to um, call for nominations for a new board president for the year 2024. I would like to nominate Mr. Hollister for board chair for 2024. And I will second that. Then we can second it to uh, appoint trustee Don Hollister as board president for the year 2024. I mean board chair. Well, yeah. Uh, well, that is your I'll be your correct. Um, so, Mr. Moose? Yes. Ms. Meyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. You are duly noted, sir. I would point out that we think it's about 15 years ago we switched from chair, from president to chair by state law. Uh, I would entertain nomination for board vice chair for the year 2024. I'll nominate Trustee Moyer. Thank you, Chris. I'll second that. Well, I'll accept the nomination. It's been moved and seconded to appoint uh, Trustee Marilyn Mar Moyer as board vice chair for the year 2024. Yes. Yes. Ms. yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. We have two sets of minutes that have not been adopted yet, December 4 and December 18. I would entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of December 4th, 2023. I move that we adopt them. Second. Any discussion, corrections? No. None. Then who can second it to adopt the minutes of December 4th, 2023? Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hoster? Yes. 
And I would entertain a motion to adopt minutes for December 18, 2023. So moved. Second. Any, any discussion, corrections? No. That's a celebration song. Mm -hmm. A brief musical interlude. Yay. Sorry, it's a new phone. <laughs> I actually looked at that. I was like, sorry about yeah, phone. It's Quaker's other technology. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. I moved in second to adopt the minutes of December 18th, 2023 as presented. Mr. Mucher? Yes. Mr. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Now I'm thoroughly confused. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve payment of bills in the total of $45,443.21 uh, from the general fund $7,965.71 from the fire fund, $30,798.38. From the cemetery, $720.52. EMS billing, $3,000. Road and bridge, uh, $2,958.60. So moved. Second. Any discussion? No. No. Glad to see the fire continues to be in the 30s. <coughs> May we vote? We moved and seconded to approve payment of bills in the amount of $45,443.21 and enumerated. Mr. Moocher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion approved. Now, uh, we'd be open, the floor would be open for public comment on any topic that isn't already on the agenda. Should I sit there? You want me to sit here? It's As you feel comfortable. Okay. Well, uh, I said I'd give five minutes, so I'll be short and sweet. Uh, my name is Nick Bundren. I work for a nonprofit called the Ohio Land and Liberty Coalition. Uh, the goal of our organization is to support solar and wind development on the basis that uh, property rights need to be upheld and protected across the state of Ohio. And I wanted to take a couple of minutes of your time and just ask a couple of questions, and then maybe uh, I can answer a couple of yours if you have any. Uh, so I said I'd give five minutes, so I'll get straight to the point. Um, I just wanted to ask if there's been any interest in utility scale solar or wind in the township or in Greene County that you guys have seen? Um, yeah, we've been going through a process for two or three years now um, of 175 megawatt industrial development was lost their permit um, and is appealing it now. Okay. And um, we're also working on commercial scale, possibly commercial scale, smaller solar under 50 megawatts. Cool. In the township. So, uh, um, working on zoning and but whether to what extent we want to um, allow it to, what regulations we have. So what we've seen across the state of Ohio, all the way from Youngstown all the way down to Cincinnati and everywhere in between, is that uh, residents and neighbors of the projects like this become, it's just a divisive topic. Uh, it's like Hatfields and McCoys. Have you guys seen any organized opposition in the past? Yes. <laughs> Was it, and I'll give an example. Um, I was up in Mahoning County near Youngstown a couple of months ago, and they brought 500 people in to a room to speak out against solar panels. Would you say it's large scale opposition, more small scale, just neighbor to neighbor, or? We have an organized, there is an organized um, citizens group who, okay. who opposes industrial solar, yeah. Which leads me into my next question. Um, Another thing that we've seen across the state, unfortunately, is that uh, township trustees have been given the responsibility of dealing with these, with these problems. Uh, and so what they've been doing is passing, passing exclusions or bans in the township in regards to utility scale, solar, or wind. 
And I was wondering if you guys had received any requests from residents to do so, or if you had passed any in the past. We, we received a request, and we, we narrowed the, the two adjoining townships put an exclusion forever or however it lasts on their entire townships. And we opted to do a two year exclusion zone just in the area of the proposed um, development I, for the purpose of gathering more information and having more of a community process. Okay. Is that township wide or is it just in that? It's just um, here. It's a southeast, small portion. southeast of the Little Miami River. So. Oh, okay. Up near Cedarville. Cool. Well, I think that's all the questions I have. If, you know, we've our organization has been absolutely everywhere. Uh, pretty much all the solar bands that you see on the news, we've been there. We've spoken at those public hearings. If you guys have any questions, I'd love to answer. What is your goal? It could be an, an hour discussion. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what is the goal of your group? Your well, mission? the goal is to protect property rights for landowners. Oh, um, we feel, and this is our personal opinion, we feel that the Ohio Constitution and the U.S. Constitution protects the rights for farmers or landowners to develop utility-scale solar and wind. Uh, you know, I can go into all the economic benefits, but I, again, I'd be here an hour, and I'd still have five minutes. And we, we've been through so many public hearings about it, so we're I'm sure, yeah. Page, yeah. Um, well, we have a process. Well, we're going to talk about that later in the meeting, maybe about what happened to the Commission. We've opened up a public process with our zoning commission. We were, have different people with different points of view, and I'm hoping for a, um, an intelligent and um, um, good process with that. So I think we're, um, I think we're going to sort it out <laughs> one way or another. And there's an ongoing tension, anything to do with zoning, because zoning, almost by definition, limits property rights and some of the things it really is shocking how divisive it's been unfortunately it's not just the state of ohio uh, i worked in virginia for the same organization and you'd think it wouldn't be so nasty and mean and personal but it, it really is it's just neighbor turning against neighbor and so that's what we hope to do is just open up the dialogue and i wouldn't say be able to educate some of our elected officials but open up the dialogue, you hear from us, we hear from you kind of thing. So uh, I can give you out some business cards. If you have That'd any questions or you hear about anything, I don't sleep, I like to be busy, so I can pass well, out some cards. Um, it might be so boring that you fall asleep, but you could review uh, on the Power Siding Board, uh, Ohio Power Siding Board website, uh, the various testimony uh, for and against the Kingwood project. Kingwood? Okay, cool. Yes. Well, thank you very much for your time, trustees. You. Uh, I'll get out of your hair. Okay. That's all right. Thanks for visiting us. Thank you. Y'all have a good one. Take care. And did you, for the minutes, did you get his name? He signed the list. The okay. Report. Thank you. Okay, cool. Have a good evening. Thank you. We have, um, for those of you who are still here, um, Toward the end of the meeting, we're gonna, just going to give a report of the Zoning Commission meeting of the 19th. Okay. So if you want to, stick around. I don't think you want to do that now. No. I'm not chair anymore, so I can't decide. <laughs> the, there are a series of beginning of the year uh, resolutions that are usually pro forma. Um, First, a now is this in conflict? Motion to accept zoning fees for the year of 2024, $25 for general permit, $25 for an agritourism permit, $100 for board of zoning appeals application, $25 for roadside work permit. Well, I'd entertain a motion to uh, adopt those fees. I'll second that. Can I move? Yeah. I'll move. Okay. Oh. 
Second. I'll second that. Could we have a vote on that? So I moved and seconded to uh, uh, accept the zoning phase for the year 2024 as specified. Mr. Moocher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion is approved. I'd uh, entertain a motion to establish the mileage rate for travel, bus our business travel, outside township at 67 cents per mile. Do I hear a so moved? Do I hear a second? Yes. Second. May we vote, please? We moved and seconded to establish the mileage rate for travel outside the township at 67 cents per mile. Mr. Winter? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion approved. Uh, before we move on these different board appointments, could we Maybe agree on names before we vote? Uh, currently, our MDRPC is Maryland. Maryland. And I'll, I'll continue that unless you guys okay. want it. Uh, Chris, you're Re Green County Regional Planning. I'll continue. I'd be happy to continue on the uh, Clifton Union Cemetery. Uh, he's not here, but I'm fairly sure that Dan would continue as Sexton. And I thought we'd put Throw Margaret on there too. But at last meeting, did Throw Margaret supposed to be on that too? That's a, okay. a separate okay. role. Okay. Never mind. Am I right on that, Margaret? Uh, the you're you're not I don't know wanting to be Sexton, you would be the the board or something. Treasurer. Yeah, I'm the yeah, I'm the treasurer. Um, and that's decided by the cemetery board. Okay. Uh, Representative to the Yellow Springs, actually we have two representatives to the Yellow Spring Development Corporation. Well, I've only been sitting in as a citizen. Would you like to be? Are you, you, like are to you take asking mine? me to take your place? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I anticipate attending some meetings, but, uh, and then we have also had, since if two trustees were on there, we get two representatives. If there were two trustees, that would be a majority. It would be. We could argue the legality of it, but we've chosen to have someone else, a, a citizen of the township, and in the past it's been Corey Van Onstel, and she has said she would be willing to continue. Okay, that sounds good. Um, I have, I've been intent, well, I was asked to join the Ye Yellow Springs Schools Active Transportation Committee as a um, representative from the township. So I may have neglected to tell you that I've been to two meetings so far. I'd like to make that official. You'd like to continue? Yeah. And then they want me to have a voting part on it, so, yeah. Uh, and aren't there a number of members of the Glen Forest Natural Burial Committee? There's a committee, mm -hmm. but I'm the only one from this. Oh, that's, yeah, Maryland. Did I forget any on this, on this list? Did we forget? I'm looking at Yellow Springs Environmental Commission. Um, I don't know. I'm not a, I, I attend them, attend them, but I, I I'm, know, I'm, just I'm not a voting member. So. I wasn't aware that we had a formal representative. No, we don't, it's not formal. I, I usually report sometimes what they're doing, but it's not formal. Well, I'll read these again, but are there other? That's what I'm giving you from the minutes, the other ones I have. The, the environmental and then the Green County Township Association. I, these are just okay. on the reports that we yeah. get at standing committee, so that's, I'm just giving you the names. I don't know that there needs to be. I wasn't one. aware that we had a, one, I mean, we're all members of the mm -hmm. county yeah. okay. uh, association. Yeah. Okay, so that's uh, Well, what I have here, uh, that our board representative on MVRPC would be Marilyn Moyer. On Green County Regional Planning Commission would be Chris Mutcher. On the Clifton Union Cemetery Board, Don Hollister. 
uh, that actually, technically, I don't think we name a sexton. It would be the Clifton Union Board. Uh, the sexton's also for township cemeteries. Then let's just say township cemetery sexton. Hmm. Dan Gilkenauer. Uh, Yellow Springs Development Corporation, Marilyn Moyer and Corey Van Ostel. Uh, Yellow Springs Schools Active Transportation Committee, Marilyn Moyer. Glen Forest Natural Burial Committee, Marilyn Moyer. So moved. Any further discussion? I have one question. Chris, are you also on the executive committee of the regional planning school? Yes, but that's okay. chosen that's internally. Okay. Uh, then I have, I would entertain a motion to establish the meeting schedule. We need to vote on that. Uh, pardon? We didn't vote on that. Excuse me. They moved and seconded to recommend new board appointments as specified. Um, Mr. Mutter? Yes. Ms. Marr? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Appointments are approved. Uh, <clears throat> when I was first elected six years ago uh, as a trustee, I suggested that we consider a different evening for our meetings. Um, and the compromise was instead of Monday at 7 p.m., it would be Monday at 5 p.m. And I'm comfortable with that, but uh, I'd like to consider moving our meetings to Wednesday evenings all the time. Is there any interest in that, or should we go ahead with what we've had before? Do you have a reason? Well, the reason, the argument was that it's the same night as Village Council in both Yellow Springs and Clifton. And the accommodation was that we would move to 5 p.m. And that's worked out for me, but I still would entertain Wednesdays. I would just assume we keep it the way it is myself. Okay. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to establish the meeting schedule for the year 2024 as first and third Mondays of each month, unless they fall on a holiday and then meetings will be on the Wednesday following the holiday, such as tonight. Special meetings will be posted on the township's website and fire station bulletin board. Do I, move. Do I hear a second? Second. May we vote? It's been moved and seconded to establish the meeting schedule for the year 2024 as follows. First and third Mondays of each month, unless they fall on a holiday, then held on Wednesday following said holiday. Special meetings will be posted on the township's website and the fire station bulletin board. Ms. Moria. Yes. Mr. Mister. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, to entertain a motion to set contracts with Green Township, Clifton Union Cemetery Maintenance, and the Village of Clifton for snow removal and street repair as requested. Each contract to be negotiated separately and as soon as possible. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second, sure. I don't really know it. I didn't realize that. Oh, we contract. We do. We they contract with us. We do that. Yes. Okay. Got it. And uh, it is interesting that we do street maintenance for Village of Clifton. Uh, and parts of Green Township. Surely not all of it. I don't know how often that happens. Okay. Does that happen? Yes, the Clifton portion of Green Township. Oh, got it. Uh -huh. Right. Of course. Uh, I'd uh, entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session. Oh, we need to vote on that, Mr. Hollister. 
Thank um, you. It's been moved and seconded to set contracts with Green Township, Clifton Union, and Clifton Union Cemetery maintenance, and with the Village of Clifton for snow removal and street repair as requested. Contracts to be negotiated separately and as soon as possible. Mr. Mucci. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Ms. Hollister. Yes. Motion is approved. Uh, I was not aware of the need for an executive session. Um, but I wasn't either. Um, it's, Mark? It's, it's it's sorry. Huh? Yes, that's, we have to do that. Okay. To, I, in yeah, order to do steps. the next okay. three or four items. I entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss matters of personnel. Uh, and Consider the appointment, employment, dismissal. Discipline, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of public employees. So moved. Second. Any vote? A motion to return for executive committee, Mr. Mutrick? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. And this will not be long. I don't expect. But you never know. I know. Back in open session. Uh, 535. Okay. 535. The, what we discussed is pretty much an annual routine of appointments of our personnel. And I would entertain a motion to appoint Dennis Powell as interim fire chief and any additional full-time or multiple part-time firefighter EMT paramedics as needed, and all current volunteers on the roster. So moved. Central from one second. That's very, it's poignant that right. they have a, 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 a call, call <laughs> as they're appointed. It's been moved in to appoint uh, Dennis Call and an interim fire chief and additional full time or multiple part time firefighter EMT paramedics as needed and all current volunteers on the roster. And Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion approved. I would entertain a motion to appoint Daniel Gokenauer and Brandon Morris as full time road department employees and any other part-time employees as necessary. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to appoint Daniel Lochenauer and Brandon Morris as full-time road department employees, along with any other part-time employees as necessary. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion. I'd like to take this opportunity to move that we increase uh, road employee Brandon Morris's uh, hourly pay by $1 per hour. Do I hear a second? Yes, I second that. May we vote? We move and seconded to increase Brandon Morris's salary of pay from what? That. We move and seconded <laughs> to increase Brandon Morris's pay at one dollar per hour. Ms. Mutcher. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. I would entertain a motion to appoint Denise Swinger as interim zoning inspector retroactive to December 4th, 2023. So moved. Second. We moved and seconded to appoint Denise Swinger as interim zoning inspector retroactive to December 4th, 2023. Mm -hmm. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion approved. I would entertain a motion to appoint Fred Leg to the Zoning Commission, effective January 1st, 2024, and ending December 31st, 2028. All right, so move. Second. We move and second to appoint Fred Leg to the Zoning Commission, effective January 1st, 2024, ending December, 20, December 31st, 2028. Ms. Moyer? Yes, Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I would point out that we name, we appoint one member of the Zoning Commission each year. Uh, and along those lines, we also do it for the Board of Zoning Appeals. I would entertain a motion to appoint Richard Silliman to the Board of Zoning Appeals effective 
January 1st, 2024, ending December 31st, 2028. I so move. I second. To move and second and to appoint Richard Sullivan to the Board of Zoning Appeals, effective January 1, 2024, ending December 31st, 2028. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Ms. Moocher? Yes. Ms. Hollister? Yes. Uh, another typical annual uh, motion is we, I would entertain a motion to establish 2024 pay schedule for full-time employees at the current rate with a 2% cost of living increase retroactive to January 2nd, 2024. So moved. Second. You said only full, <clears throat> only full time employees, excuse me. That is, uh, it, it says for full time employees. Now, do we mean what about part time employees? That's our intention in the past. <clears throat> well, thing is we've uh, changed how we employ people. Part-time used to be exactly that, I mean, part-time here and there. Whereas now we have full-time, part-time people because of the, uh, the hours they work on shifts. And I personally think this should include those, those personnel. Uh, I would limit it to fire EMS department part-time personnel. Uh, we need the wording for an amendment or rewrite the thing. And so, but definitely we're in adding part-time. We say regular part-time or part-time fire EMS employees or full-time employees and part-time fire EMS employees. Well, then I will start over and enter, cross off whatever's already happened. Uh, I would entertain a motion to establish 2024 pay schedule for full-time employees and part-time uh, fire EMS uh, employees at the current rate with a 2% cost of living increase retroactive to January 2nd, 2024. So moved. Shall we vote? It's been moved and seconded to adopt the 2024 pay schedule for full time and part time fire and EMS. Employees with two percent cost of living effective January second, twenty twenty four. Thank you. The part time people will appreciate that. Well, I'm glad you. Ms. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Motion approved. And we have a holiday schedule. <clears throat> I would entertain a motion to establish a holiday schedule for twenty twenty four as follows. Uh, Martin Luther King's Day, January 15, President's Day, February 19, Memorial Day, May 27, Independence Day, July 4, Labor Day, September 2nd, Columbus Day, October 14, Veterans Day, November 11, Thanksgiving Day, 20th, November 24, 28. 28. Did you say 28th, Chris? I believe it's 25th, but <laughs> close enough. <laughs> well, we'll get it. We'll get it. Um, and you can tell this was an old file. 28. 28. Thank you very much. 28. Uh, Official. Christmas Day, December 25. New Year's Day, January 1, 2025. Wow. So, you know, Christmas Day was December 26th. Previously, because because Christmas because it fell on a the the holiday fell on a Sunday. Sunday Sunday or whatever, so that's why it's 
just so you guys can well, I've, I've read these dates, but I'm oblivious to the accuracy of this. <laughs> so, um, and we can I can tell this is an old file because it doesn't have Juneteenth, which is a new federal holiday, yeah. which we, the last two years we've recognized. Mm -hmm. You put it in? Mm -hmm. I don't know when it is. We're including, you're well, including Juneteenth in the list is what you're saying? Yes. It's, it's been two years. Okay. Yeah. I, as long does as anybody know the date? It's the 16th. I don't know if that's what I celebrate. I mean, is it only relevant if it falls on a Monday or not? Okay, never mind. That's why I was the date, yes. Now, um, I would, if we're discussing, I would also note that the state has changed Columbus dates in the indigenous personnel. Have they? No. Mm -hmm. I, I was looking at it. two years ago, I count more. I looked it up. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I looked that up today too, but I couldn't. Well, I would like to change. Is the holiday for Jim Rather than rereading the whole list, we have added Juneteenth and we've changed Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, it looks like Juneteenth is uh, June 19th. I'll double check all those dates before I put them in the minutes. Okay, thank you. I so move. I see it. The moved and seconded to adopt the holiday schedule as discussed. And to be clarified, um, Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion approved. Well, even though the last couple of weeks were largely holidays, we did receive correspondence. received a uh, notice of our fund status, revenue status, and appropriation status for January 3rd, 2024. Uh, what does UAN stand for? Uniform Accounting Network. It was, uh, it so was, our... I just put it there. Me and Margaret worked it out. I didn't know if, she, if that was relevant to us or not. So, yeah. Well, a UAN new threshold of 10 or more employees must file W-2s electronically. Uh, I, and the second one was just an invoice, and Chris, I just wanted to make I think I read that you had that taken care of. I don't have to do anything with it. You told them wrong, wrong, pro, I think you said wrong numbers, do it again. Yes. Yeah, okay. We corrected a... The okay. third time. An invoice okay. from True Green. Okay, so I just want to make sure they're taken care of. That's why I threw it in there. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, we received the February MVRPC agenda. Um, and this does not read well, but uh, we received from USDA uh, an attempt to obtain info regarding compliance review and security inspection. Uh, and then also from USDA, what are forms RD442 and RD443? Those are, well, it's all over it. It's, an, it's annual, since we have, since we um, are borrowing money from USDA, we just have these standard forms that we have to fill out that are Going out the door so short, and, yeah, this week. Whatever it's just, uh, and it's like a, it's a, it's like the budget, and um, they wanted to, to make sure that we have insurance with Otarma, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And we received notice from our attorneys, Brosius Johnson and Griggs, of their 2024 billing rates and they request a resolution, which we will have uh, authorizing that. Uh, and those resolutions are all in the fiscal officer's report, correct? This list of resolutions I have. Uh, mine has two under fiscal officer and two under new business. Okay. Um, we will get to that. Fire department report. Uh, first off, I completely forgot to run the run the run number, so I will email you guys 
happy to meet what those are. Outside of that, the only thing I was the rehiring stuff since I've been off. <clears throat> so there hasn't, nothing significant in terms of I didn't have any, you know, I didn't get any phone calls while I was off. So <laughs> things, I came back to peaceful things, which was good because the supervisor did a great job just in terms of handling the day-to-day -day stuff that's within their their scope and all. So I can't, it's nice to be off and essentially not be off. That's a, that's a good thing. Any questions? Oh, I'm so used to getting numbers of how many runs. I know. <laughs> and the amount, but so an email would be great. Yeah. Uh, how is Dan doing? Or Sexton? He's on the mend. Do we have cemetery information to? Well, as a temporary sexton, I guess, which I'd be happy to give out. Some of you. I'm good. <laughs> had um, multiple inquiries about uh, graves and burials and times and locations. So uh, we have two. We had one burial last week uh, in Glen Forest and sold two uh, burial plots in Glen Forest. Uh, we have two burials scheduled for next week and a third one which was tried to be scheduled on top of one a, a week from today, which is we, we can't do double ones during one day, one is clipped in one Glen Forest. So, that one has to be changed, but I imagine it's going to be changed probably till the next day, so we may have three full burials next week. Um, it's, been my, it's been my experience that entering in all the data about burials, I'm not going to get long-winded here, January seems to be the busiest time of the year for, um, uh, for cemetery action. <laughs> and so far, uh, it's... Uh, it's, it's played out. Yeah, it's well, out. Like, so you get a couple more days to get through. So we can, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's where we are at the moment. Busy, busy, busy. Well, I, I know that the Clifton Cemetery has a uh, built into the hill a stone uh, cavern with a steel gate, which I understand was where bodies were stored in the winter when it was too cold to dig. A grave. That's, that's what I heard. Mm -hmm. oh. Hopefully we won't have to use that. So global warming has <laughs> changed the whole. What uh, is How do we dig graves in the, in the dead of winter? No pun intended. 99% of the time Back our equipment can get through okay. the permafrost without, okay. without trouble. Or maybe with a little trouble, but enough that we can. We have had to postpone, but not because of the problem of digging, but because the amount of snow just would make it very difficult for people to get in and out. Will they get back out? <laughs> I didn't mean those. <laughs> uh, we, some we don't humor. need some okay. humor. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to have comedy in the okay. in our business meetings. Well, nothing wrong. Uh, Spoils. <laughs> Any other cemetery? No, that was the total report. Uh, oh, yes. That's, well, no, I, I do have one more thing. Yes. Um, all the all the new permanent tree markers are in place in Oak Grove Cemetery at this point. Uh, Brandon uh, and Ryan, his part-time person, uh, did a great job putting them all in. All. 37 of them in um, two, maybe two and a half days, which I thought was pretty unimpressive. So they're all in place, and they did it. They did it, yeah. And they did their job because a, a person uh, who, who purchased a, a, a tree grave just today, this morning, committed to purchasing one, was just effusive in, in, in praising uh, the layout of the cemetery, the whole idea of a, a, a tree grove cemetery, and and our philosophy of the natural burial, and just she was just 
very complimentary. So I wanted to pass that on. Cool. Is she from the immediate area or? From Dayton. From Dayton, yeah. Road department report. Well, I'll give that also, I guess, uh, in the absence of Mr. Gokinow. Uh, I did a road tour Sunday, and similar to the one before, all the roads uh, look to be in very good shape, minus a little patch on East Hyde Road, uh, which will probably get taken care of. Um, Brandon's been busy out on the roads. He has cleaned up uh, roadside ditches of, of, of fallen branches or or debris that has worked their way into the ditches and along the roadside that might be uh, a problem when the snow plow has to go out. Uh, he's taken care of that. He's replaced a couple of uh, no outlet signs on Carroll and Lamont Drive uh, that were aged and hard to read. So we had extra ones, so he replaced those. He installed a new no outlet sign on um, uh, Golden Willow Court uh, because they didn't have one, and it was a no outlet situation, and he's in the process of servicing every single piece of internal combustion equipment that the township has. He's replacing the oil, he's replacing the hydraulic oil, he's replacing all the filters, he's replacing the water separators in the, in the diesel, he's greasing all the fittings that need grease, uh, he's sharpening all the blades on the, on the mowers that need to be sharpened, uh, replacing the spark plugs on the on the weed eaters and, and the line and the chainsaws and sharpen the blades on the chainsaws. Who, who was the guy before Dan <laughs> way back when? Uh, John Finn. So is, is Brandon like John Finn? No, Brandon is not like John Finn. Okay. He's skinnier. He's much skinnier. <laughs> but I'm thinking of, of the uh, top mechanical stuff. Brandon is more like John's father, Harold. Than, than John himself, but we won't. Okay. Digress there. Uh, that's all I have. You for commented there's a spot on East Tide Road. <clears throat> uh, every so often I get a complaint about uh, near the mailboxes next to the covered bridge. Would that be 922? No. No? No, this is no, but that is only eat well the if it's near the, the, the it's near the covered mailbox is for the veil and for the oh on the, on the other side mm -hmm. um, it did that's oh, well, out of our jurisdiction no, that's we'll either done. U.S. Post Office or no, no, no. or puts it up for the veil no. okay I, yeah I, I don't know but it's no, certainly not ours right. mm -hmm. just any other know. road. Did the best I could. Okay. Fiscal officer's report. Um, yeah. Well, there's a couple of resolutions there. They're standard. Basically, resolution 2024-01 uh, establishes the pay schedule. I don't have a copy of it if somebody wants to read it. <coughs> or I'll read it if somebody wants to give me a copy. Where I will is, bring them to you. Oh. Like your voice. Come get them. Marilyn, did you want to? Marilyn started to read it. Do, do you want me to do it? I will. Yes. Go for it. All right. Whereas it is the intent of the township to authorize the annual pay schedule of the board of trustees and the fiscal officer, whereas a maximum annual salary is determined by the state of Ohio's revised code. Now, therefore, the annual salary of the trustees and the fiscal officer is not to exceed the maximum allowable amount set by the state and is payable on a monthly basis commencing January 1. 2024. Mm -hmm. um, so moved. Okay. I second. Could we vote? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. So I'm um, who, who moved that? I did. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2024-01 pay schedule for trustees and fiscal officer as specified. Mr. Mucha. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Resolutions adopted. Resolution 2024-2, amendment of temporary appropriations, or is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to needs of township 
Now, therefore, the trustees authorize admitting the following appropriations to the general fund, since it was requested to transfer some money from the general fund to um, 4904. Is that what it was? What? It, well, the anyway, new, the new capital fund for the yeah. new ones? Yeah, uh, yeah, yes. Um, anyway, from general fund to 1,009, transfers out, increase that by $66,861.15. And in the gas tax fund, um, 2021, 330, 212, Social Security increased by $50. So when I set up the temporary appropriations initially, I didn't have enough money in Social Security to pay them because I didn't know we were going to have extra staff, whatever. My retention trustees authorized the fiscal officer to do so immediately, and she did. I so move that we adopt this. A second. May we vote. Been moved. Uh, and moved and second to adopt resolution 2024-02, amendment of temporary appropriations as enumerated. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Mr. Foster. Yes. Resolution is adopted. So it looks like we need to back up on the two other two resolutions. Yeah. Under the fire department. Did I, did I mess that? Is that there are two the wrong listed, agenda? On mine, there are two listed under new business. Well, we have six. We have so a blanket blanket purchase have, orders. I don't have. We could do blanket purchase orders under under um, your. Under, yeah. I don't. I'll read it. Uh, resolution twenty twenty four. Oh, three. Oh, 03 establish maximum amount for blanket purchase orders. Be it resolved that the board of township trustees. Board of Miami Township Trustees wishes to establish the maximum amount for blanket purchase orders at $150,000. So moved. I'll second. May we vote? It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2024-03, setting the maximum dollar amount for blanket purchase orders at $150,000. Mr. Moosher. Yes. Ms. Moore. Yes. Mr. Hollis. Yes. Resolution. Let's do the, the other three under new business. Uh, other parts of fiscal office. Anything else? No. I'd like to clarify that uh, although in the last election we elected a new fiscal officer, the term of the fiscal officer will run through March. 31st. So, but she, does she start on April 1st? Mm -hmm. So, there'll be a few days, what, should we swear her in at the previous, at the last meeting in March, or what, what happened um, 20 years ago when you? <laughs> 20, 20, almost 24 years ago. 24 years ago. I never remember. But, um, but I know that, um, I, I want to bring her on board before I leave, of course, and I feel it's appropriate to offer some sort of stipend for her to be here. I mean, would, you know, I mean, I, I don't feel like I can expect her to come in and voluntarily be trained, let me put it that way, but I, I'm not the decider. Um, I don't know how many hours that would be necessarily or how you would determine how I should pay her unless, um, because she's still in training, but um, you know, I want to get her. I want to get her feet wet, however you want to put it. You know, and get to get the basics laid out for her. Um, so why don't you talk with her, and maybe I will also be rather than vote tonight on something. Well, I, I wouldn't want, if I may speak. Sure. I wouldn't want to vote tonight. Certainly, I would want to talk to her till we. I'd like to get a feel for how this usually happens. Is, is this customary? It's four times a century. <laughs> well, no, no, I mean, not here, but in general. I don't know. I can tell you when I started. Um, I, there was such things as a visiting clerk who came in because the person who I was replacing, um, she was not available to help me out. Uh, so we had that. So, um, the state, the unit, you know, they, they, there's, there was a list of visiting clerks who would come in and kind of help you get started at least that kind of stuff, because there was not, nobody to help me out. Um, so there are visiting clerks around. I don't know 
the one that we had was just um, from up the road, so it was really convenient for her to come in. Um, so, you, you know, I just feel like, she, she, I feel like she needs, she's going to need some, definitely some well, guidance. she's going uh, yeah, to be, uh, really yeah, do a lot time. of work before you yeah, leave. So, um, but I had, I had, I guess I'd like some time to think about that and ask around how. Yeah, I mean, I'm not expecting any done. action on it tonight, but, I would, but I'm just I saying. I wouldn't say contact her and ask her what she wants. Well, it wasn't in this work, in my opinion. She was elected, but she has not started her term, and she's not been sworn in. Mm -hmm. Basically makes her a private individual. As a private individual, Margaret is certainly empowered to hire someone with her as an assistant. Uh, well, I'm not exactly sure what they call them, but, but it is in the books that you have that authority to, yeah. to do that. Well, yeah, and that's the way she was hired, same as basic, an same assistant basic, to, the, yeah. to the fiscal officer. Right. So. And I would think that's how it would be the appropriate way to do that. Um, keep in mind, if she, if she were sworn in, she could not receive any remuneration other than her uh, yearly yeah. stipend. So yeah, that is once she's sworn once in. Once she's sworn in. And my original question was just looking forward to the end of March, but how would we handle that? But we can we'll put that in the same package to talk about what are the details. And I'll I I will get in touch with her and ask her how she you know, I mean it it seems it seems like um once I mean there's so much to do, um, yeah. you know, um, that I want to get her at least familiar with the, the kind of the routine day to day, like the get payroll and pay some bills, and then there's other stuff that is going to come across to her, her her desk that she might be like, what do I do with this? I don't know. So well, I mean, so it's kind of a play by year thing, maybe, yeah. as far as how much we need, kind of, you know, the whole thing to go, but. Yeah, a couple of things. Once I, I, I had anticipated that we would pay her too, and earlier and you said, and, and I thought we had that discussion, and you thought, no. I thought we had a discussion, you said that we, we, that wouldn't be something we do, but, but it, it, it's, it's reasonable to me that we would. Well, what I heard Chris say is that it's not the trustees to decide, yeah. it's, uh, okay. although, this, so in effect, done. since we sign everything, <clears throat> all the checks, we we would need to go along with Margaret's hiring somebody. And that sounds reasonable. The other thing is, just an aside, at the um, Green County, at the Green County Township Association meeting, they were swearing in brand new um, fiscal officers already. They had already sworn them in, remember that night? Yeah. And um, I wonder, I guess they, they get, forfeited the right to <laughs> train. Well, okay. We don't so, need to go into that. I, I saw that no, as symbolic saying. rather than actually taking the job of a nice. Oh, okay. The Bible's involved. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that sounds good. Anything else from the fiscal officer? I don't think so. So our zoning inspector, our interim zoning inspector, is not here tonight. Uh, but there was a zoning commission meeting in December. Marilyn, did you go there? Yeah. For the first thing on the, the, the transition update, though, I just didn't know if anybody had any questions. She hit the ground running. There were a lot of things that came in and were carrying over. So she's been meeting with people and had meetings today with our the prosec assistant prosecutor and has a meeting on. Friday and has had many meetings with many people seeking things, so I didn't ask her um, to come tonight because she's been doing so much. Mm -hmm. um, and did anybody have any questions about the transition? Any concerns? Or I think it's going very well. Awesome. And the zoning commission meeting on December 9th, fifteenth. Um, the three of us in this room that were there, so maybe three different perspectives. Um, I thought it was a. It, it was a. The topic was the solo, the small solar break, um, breaks that they're writing. Um, it was the first time I think the public was in the room on this topic. 
besides Jennifer? I don't name? attend all of them. I haven't attended in a while, yeah. so I can't speak to that. Um, and, and I thought it went really well. I, uh, the, the three township, the, the three zoning commissioners talked for about an hour and what really went through the process and their personal experiences as landowners. And one of the surprising things that came out that was very enlightening was the, um, what was it, Dale? Um, one of the zoning commissions was surprised that yeah, how many offers he's getting. He got an offer to lease 100 of his acres he got offered to at least 25 of his acres. He happens to be near the, the power line by Snip Road. So, um, and the other one, <laughs> who what the other trust the zoning commission member who wasn't near there hadn't gotten any offers. But um, it was interesting to me how, because I heard that there were scouts out there, but I didn't know what people were actually getting these offers. Offers, and they had they're they're pretty clear on what they want for the personal use stuff and they just have to clear out a, f a few a few things such as setbacks and heights and things and there wasn't much to say and then they gave everybody in the room there were about 10 members of the, the public a chance to speak as much as they'd like and um, and so the they admitted that they hadn't considered that commercial small-scale commercial solar was on their radar, um, but they were open and people spoke their minds. I think the central question came down to, the, the, the commission member who had gotten offers from solar companies, he said they were, they were lucrative, they were inviting, and he didn't believe, he didn't believe that it was good for the land, so. Um, so that's, that's the reason he hasn't taken them. And I think what it came down to, the discussion, the central question was, and I think that unites everyone, is deciding whether it's good for the land or bad for the land or neutral. And um, I think that's something we haven't, there's no, um, they're open to further discussion about, but haven't um, come to any conclusion. Um, and they said that they will continue talks about the possibility of commercial solar. Um, not this January, in January they've invited the trustees to join them for the zoning commission for business, you know, what, and for, it's um, the day before we meet, so 13th, 17th, 16th. If they ask me to extend an invitation, and they asked people who are interested in further, um, they, they said they'll be picking up the solar again in February. And that was my viewpoint, so I'll open it up to anyone else who had a, a viewpoint of where, where we are, where we are in the were, process. Were both of you there? We were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go ahead. I, I think offered a uh, good summary it did seem that there was uh, not great information on whether or not having a solar farm on land would be harmful versus some uh, people who actually thought that resting the land would be good. There were questions about compaction, where there were people who had uh, different thoughts um, and perhaps had received different information. So my conclusion at the end of it was that we were looking for more science to clarify some of those very important questions. Jennifer? Uh, my perspective was that it was basically um, the commissioners, zoning commission members, um, treated it as a form of information gathering, right? There was a group of several people, they politely listened to everyone's input. Um, a few of them shared their opinions, but no no decisions or, or thought processes were really laid out yet. So I think they're just information gathering at the moment. Um, and we'll see in the next several months, of course, how they begin to, to shape things. So, okay. I don't know if it was 
four years ago, five years ago, when, um, what was the company before Vesper? Anyway. Land lease. Hmm? Land lease was their first name. Uh, when their folks were going around, uh, we had someone from the Farm Bureau come in to talk about leases and what to, uh, what should landowners be aware of uh, when they're, uh, what should be in, in your possible lease. Uh, I don't know how much of that information really got out. Uh, that's a, a separate issue. I'll pursue that. Um, so we've been invited to the January 16, uh, 2024 Zoning Commission meeting. Is that what you said? Yes. Uh, 17. 16. Sorry. 16. <laughs> they, they, they meet on the third Tuesday of the month, I believe. Right? 16. It's, a, it's an odd year, it's an odd month when they meet before us mm -hmm. because of due to our holiday schedule. The day before us. The day before us. Here we go on to new business. We have more sure. resolutions. And, uh, but what, careful of the numbers because they're not correct. Uh, that is on the agenda, they're not correct. Right. Um, uh, we have. We have a four. Five. I, I do not six. have in my hand. I have them right here, Don. Roshis. Okay. I'm not going to read this whole thing. No. I'll read the whereas is, but not the detail. <clears throat> 2024 04. A resolution employing townships attorneys on an annual basis for the year 2024. Whereas the Miami Township Board of Trustees is authorized by section 309.09B of the revised code to employ attorneys on an annual basis other than the prosecuting attorney to represent the township and its officers, boards, and commissions in their official capacities and to advise them on legal matters and whereas same section of the revised code provides that no such attorney may be employed except on the order of the board, duly entered upon its journal, in which the compensation to be paid for the attorney's legal services shall be fixed. And whereas the board finds it necessary to appoint attorneys to counsel and represent the township on an annual basis for calendar year 2024 in such matters as the board or its designee may refer to them, uh, what have we? How much have we appropriated? Five thousand last year. Whereas the board has appropriated the sum of five thousand, shall I say? I don't believe we exceeded that, so I think that's a, a comfortable number. Whereas the board has appropriated the sum sum of five thousand dollars for legal services for twenty twenty four. And therefore, be it resolved that, and then it goes through citing uh, $195 per hour for attorney time, $117 per hour for law clerk time, and $105 per hour for legal assistant time. And I would repeat, the total compensation shall not exceed 5000 without further action by this board. Mm -hmm. And that is not all the wording of the resolution, but that's the, the key parts. I would entertain a motion. I'll move uh, adoption resolution 2024-04. And I'll second it. Any discussion? Name me both, please. To move and second to adopt resolution 2024-04, um, retaining attorneys Brocius Johnson and Griggs with rates as specified, not to exceed five thousand dollars without further action. 
Mr. Richard? Yes. Ms. Hoyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Uh, resolution, although it's out of order numerically, I'm going to hold 05 until, because it's not a routine business, it's a special item. Uh, annual reappointment of fire rescue department personnel, resolution 202406. Whereas the continuing need exists to maintain proper staffing within the Miami Township Fire Rescue Department, and whereas the township desires to maintain the current combination staffing model, including career, part-time, and volunteer personnel, and whereas Fire Chief Denny Powell has recommended the reappointment of all Fire Rescue Department personnel as listed on attachment A, and whereas the current year budget has been developed to allow for this staffing, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees shall reappoint all fire rescue personnel as listed on attachment A for 2024. And I will not read all 22 names. I move that we adopt resolution 2024-06. I'm gonna make sure you know that's 06. I'll second. Any discussion? None. None. Shall we vote? And it's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2024-06, reappointment of fire personnel as specified in the attached list. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Ms. Moocher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Resolution is approved. Then. We have a resolution for the endorsement of the 2023 Yellow Springs Schools School Travel Plan, and that's resolution 2024-05. And I'll read the whole thing. Whereas the Miami Township Board of Trustees appreciates the need for continuous improvement through maintaining and developing non-motorized infrastructure to be a healthy, thriving community, and whereas the majority of Miami Township public school students, both the residents of the incorporated village of Yellow Springs and the residents of the unincorporated rural township reside within the Yellow Springs exempted school district and attend Yellow Springs schools, and whereas the Miami Township Board of Trustees embraces the initiatives recommended in the 2023 Yellow Springs Schools Travel Plan, which promotes the development of a high quality integrated surface transportation infrastructure, encouraging safety, recreation, environmental sustainability, equity inclusion, and health. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of Miami Township that we hereby endorse the 2023 Yellow Springs School Travel Plan in its entirety. I move for adoption of resolution 2024-05. One second. Uh, the entire plan has been made available. Any discussion? None. None. And this is something you've worked on or been yeah. part of. Yeah, then they, yeah. Uh, let's vote. Move and second is your <coughs> resolution 2024-05, endorsement of Yellow Springs School Yellow Springs Schools 2023 Safe Schools Travel Plan. Um, Ms. Moocher. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Resolution is adopted. Under old business, do you have an I don't think we need to do an update. I'm waiting to hear from Ashley Caldwell. And yeah, I haven't heard right about anything. She, she's got me on the wait list. She's so there's the a pending broadband update for the future. Next meeting. And it's it's not broadband. It's just our little our little well, it's business arrangement. The northeast or NE broadband update. 
Um, Not northeast. It occurs to me that Lee Sloan has asked something of us. Do we need to vote on that? I don't have it in front of me. Um, the, that is, he wants us, he suggests, Lee Sloan being our attorney regarding the Kingwood Solar uh, proposal that is now uh, has been rejected by the Ohio Power Siding Board and was on a second appeal to the Ohio Supreme Court. Uh, and we have moved, there are two appeals, two cross appeals. Uh, one is based on, there are, there are eight reasons to oppose a utility scale uh, solar uh, installation. And one of them, number six, is a community of public opposition. And then there are others that are more technical. And we had uh, united with uh, the other townships and Citizens for Green Acres. Uh, and were there other others joining in that? I don't think so. I can't remember. Uh, anyway, and then that is, we we united uh, opposing based on what we heard as public opinion uh, in opposition, and. Each of the townships passed resolutions against it. There were uh, a few public hearings and events. Uh, and also there were technical uh, oppositions separately that the Power Siding Board uh, did not uh, agree with. So there was a, uh, I misused the term cross appeal earlier. Uh, it was there was a cross appeal uh, on a few of the technical um, objections that state law would uh, provide for. And our attorney has recommended that we drop that and focus on the uh, public opposition. That, where the county commissioners and three townships involved have uh, united to, in opposition. So this, he's suggesting that we move to withdraw our cross appeal. Uh, and I, I don't think we need to call it a resolution. Legally, resolution and motion are the same. Uh, our practice is on uh, personnel and le uh, financial matters. We call it a resolution and use whereas, whereas. And I think if we, I would entertain a motion to uh, withdraw our cross appeal uh, in the opposition to the Kingwood Solar Project. I'll make that motion. Don Hyde, can I yeah. ask a question? Well, let's yeah. finish the motion, then we can discuss. Okay. I'll second so that we get a discussion. Mm -hmm. So is that for just the portions that there he's suggesting to drop, which are the technical aspects, and then continuing based on the public criteria? We would be continuing based on uh, point number or category or point number six in the Ohio Revised Code. Okay. So, I was going to make sure I understand this, and maybe you can help Jennifer. We had committed to opposing it on the, based on the public opposition, and then we also would do an appeal based on the technical and environmental stuff, right? And now we're saying just, but we, we we're already in motion, we've already voted to, to do the first thing, so. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so that stays if we drop that would, it. It was continued to be a support for an appeal to the Supreme Court based on the united opposition. Uh, so what we're voting on is to drop our cross appeal based on the technical, technical issues. Uh, okay. I move that we... It has been, it's been moved. Okay, it's been second. Second. Uh, Shall we vote? Uh, it's been moved and seconded to drop the cross appeal in the Kingwood case um, based on technical issues and continue with number six, the public opposition. Uh, Mr. Moocher? Yes. Ms. Moore? Yes. Mr. Hawley? Yes. Motion approved. And thank you for being such a good chair that the that you're still doing my job. Oh. Well, it's only been an hour, so. <laughs> uh, and don't worry, even if it's, bring it up anyway, anytime. Oh yeah, no problem. Uh, are there other matters that should come up tonight? I have none. I have none at public. I do have one more thing. Um, yeah. So in one of the previous meetings, um, there were a couple people who really don't have the historical knowledge with the Kingwood project or the OPSB process and how all of that played out over many, many years now, um, or who were actively being compensated by um, the Kingwood developer who provided some comments about, it seemed in my mind that they were trying to um, shame the, the township trustees for even being involved in the, you know, taking up legal action and, and stepping forward to intervene. Um, <clears throat> and I just wanted you guys to start your year with a reminder of the, the 20 plus, 200 plus attendees who attended, I think, some of the meetings, Don, that you were just referencing. Um, we've had We've had boatloads of people in here before, maybe, I don't even know what building we were, what space we were in at the time, but um, all of those residents, right, in, primarily in the unincorporated areas of the township, remember that. We were all there. Um, we were all highly impacted by the Kingwood Project, and we all greatly appreciate the fact that you guys, over the years, have listened to us. Um, and stepped forward to get involved in the process that the state laid out for you to be involved in. Um, in our minds, you did your job, right? And you did it very well. And I just wanted you to know that. I, wanted you to, I didn't like that in that last meeting they were implying that you know it was shameful that you even thought to We, we spent involved. public money for an attorney. Right, um, but again, the state process kind of forces you to do that. So. But those, all those people who, again, they, they didn't have the historical knowledge about, um, they appreciate that. You listen to us, and, and we all appreciate that. So I think you guys should be proud of your decision um, to be involved in that and, and continue you know, towing the line on that and, and standing firm. So we appreciate that. I just wanted you to have that as your starting off point for the year. That's it. Other, other points, other topics? I've done. Well, I entertain a motion to, were you about to say something? No, not at all. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Well, I will just declare unanimous.